In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to run a C-sharp mapper and reducer job in an HD Insight cluster. As part of the Big Data Lambda architecture, what we're going to do is demonstrate uh, the Windows Azure HD Insight cluster along with the MapReduce job. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll have our raw data files in a directory. This time we're going to take uh, two dat files and put them in a directory. We'll use uh, the HD Insight console to run a C-sharp streaming job which will go ahead and run our two MapReduce programs to take and create a parts file. And so once the job is done eventually what we could do is load this into a Hive table for future processing uh, using Hive. Uh, but for now let's go ahead and show you how to run the actual mapper and reducer within HD Insight. Okay, we've created now our mapper and reducer programs. It's time now to upload those to our HD Insight cluster and then process the data. Now we're going to do a little different thing than we did uh, before with the JavaScript program. Specifically, what I've done is I've used the Azure Storage Explorer to upload the original census data underscore one and census data underscore two dot dat files without the, the headings in them. These were the source files that we combined together to make the census data dot dat file. What we're going to do is we're going to put them in a directory to show how a MapReduce program can read all the files in a directory and then thus help in parallelism when it's processing the data. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we've got to go to our interactive console and we're going to have to create an app for our directory and we'll copy over the, datas, uh, the data files into our Hadoop cluster. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and make our app directory here. And we'll make our data directory. Okay, now that we have our two directories, it's time to copy the two data files into the data directory. So again, what we'll do is we'll use this copy command here, where we're again copying from Bootcamp01 uh, and the particular storage account uh, into our data folder. So we'll go ahead and copy this clipboard and paste. Okay, so there we are. It should be copied over, and then we'll copy over the second data file into the directory. So we'll go over here and flip over to our console, and then paste uh, the DAT2 file. Okay, and let's just verify that the two files are in place. We'll do a, our ls command. and then check it out. Okay, so we have our two files, uh, pretty large, that's good. Okay, so now that we have our data uploaded, the next thing to do is upload our XE files. So again, what we're gonna use is the fs uh, command. So the fs.put command, okay. And again, what we're going to do is choose our file, which is over in the application directory. And so we'll go ahead and take, uh, we'll start with our mapper. Now our destination for the mapper is going to be our um, app directory right here. So we'll go ahead and copy this to the clipboard. And we'll paste this in and go ahead and do the upload. So that looks like it was done successfully. The next thing we're going to do is take our reducer and do the same thing. So we'll go ahead and do our FS put. Uh, and we'll choose our file, in this case the reducer. And again, uh, we'll just take um, our apps directory there and go ahead and do the upload. So again, let's verify that We've done the upload OK, and so we'll go ahead and do an ls command to make sure the mapper and the reducer are correctly on our cluster. Okay, so there's our mapper and our reducer. 
Great. So now that they have those uploaded, the next step is to actually go ahead and create the job. Now we're going to cheat a little bit, so we're going to go back over to our console here and go back to the main console. Um, because uh, what we're going to do is run what's called a C-sharp streaming job. And the way you kind of kick one of those off is you go to, to samples and you select the CS uh, streaming item here. And what this does is it provides um, the default. So when we go to deploy to your cluster, what this does is set up the, the job and everything with the three parameters. It just saves a little bit of time in getting this first one set up. Afterwards, you can use it as needed. So now that we have this in here, we're going to go ahead and uh, put in our job name. And uh, in this case, uh, the job name uh, will be MapReduce, uh, this guy right here. So we'll jump back over here, and this is our paste. Now you see what this is doing is it's using an internal jar file called Hadoop underscore streaming dot jar, uh, which is used for doing the um, the work here. So we're going to put in our three or our three parameters here. So the first parameter is the parameter that specifies the location of the mapper and reducer programs. So if we look at what those look like here, so essentially what we're saying is a dash files. In, uh, command and we're saying to bring in our reducer exe and our mapper exe. So I'm going to take this and copy it to the clipboard and replace this text here. Okay, so now we have our mapper. The next thing we need to do is specify the input files. And this is where we're going to use the directory notation. So here, if you notice on the input, we indicate that we're using the data directory as the input, and then the output will be uh, the big data bootcamp result. So I'll go ahead and just copy the input command here. And we'll call that parameter 2, or parameter 1. OK. And now finally, we have to indicate what our mapper and our reducer exes are. So again, uh, we'll delete uh, the value that we had there. And we'll now go back to our notepad. And here's where we go ahead and specify what's happening. And what it's doing is it's looking for these exe files in the files directory where we indicated them. So we don't have to put in the long names each time. So we'll go ahead and copy that to the clipboard and use that uh, for a parameter. Okay, so now you can see how the final command would look like. Uh, we could use this command if we were using the HD Insight console and running the job. So at this point, we are now ready uh, to execute the job. So I'm going to go ahead and hit execute. Now one of the things that you can do as the job is executing is check its status. Now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to take uh, in our browser window, and I'm just going to go ahead and let this continue running. I can, just so we can see the output, and we'll go ahead and use the paste and go option. And you'll see here we have our task that's set up, and if we click on this, um, we can see our job history. And it says that the job um, successfully completed. So let's now take a look and see if that's really the case, because it still looks like it's running uh, when we look at what's going on here. OK, so I went ahead and refreshed. And we see here that it looks like uh, we reduced and the output went to the output file. So now let's take a look to see if we actually uh, got done what we needed to get done. So to do that, what we're going to do is go back to our interactive console. 
and we're going to do an ls command on the actual output directory. So we'll go ahead and paste. And we see here that there were two items created. Again, as I scroll over here, we can see our success. And we see that the file is about the same size as we expected. So you can see that by actually putting directories into a file and then processing them, uh, the MapReduce program will just read everything that's in there and do the work. Okay, let's now take a look and see uh, the last bit of data that was in there. So we'll go ahead and use the cat command to output the first set of data. So I'll copy this and go ahead and output. And you can see uh, by the results, um, we get our expected results uh, for our file. So just that easy, uh, we were able to take our mapper and reducer that we created in the second exercise, uh, use those against two DAT files that were in a directory without having to explicitly specify the name of the file, and process the results. That concludes this exercise.